Good morning, traders and investors. Roger Scott here, Senior Strategist for Wealth Press. Today's Tuesday, it's May 16th. It's about 7.37 in the morning. The market's gonna gear up to open in a little less than two hours. Now, before I begin, subscribe to this channel. Go to the YouTube Wealth Press channel. Go to YouTube, type in Wealth Press, subscribe to this channel, like this channel, and post comments. That's where I respond to all of these comments that you guys post. I actually respond personally every day. Now, let's get into today's video. Now, as you can see here, the Dow Jones is uh, down about 85 points, kind of randomish. Uh, NASDAQ is down just a hair. Not really a lot going on before the opening bell. Now, just to give you a little taste of what we're missing right now, yesterday, one of the reasons why the broad market was just kind of wobbly was because we had this report come out. This was the Empire State Manufacturing Survey. And this report, they were expecting manufacturing to be down just a hair. Uh, consensus negative 10, positive 9.3. It came out at negative 31.8. And uh, that's a survey of manufacturing in New York, which is you know pretty important. Now today, you've got retail sales. Retail sales accounts for two thirds of the GDP, two thirds of the economy. That report's coming out in about 52 minutes from now. Uh, it's 7.38 in the morning, so it's coming out at 8.30 in the morning, Eastern time. And you could see here, the expectations are not that great, but it'll be very, very interesting to see how they do, especially X vehicles and X vehicles and gas. But uh, I really can't wait to see how this report comes out. The consensus is 0 0.7, uh, positive 0.7. X vehicles and X gas, it's positive 0.2, it's barely up. But notice the range here is negative 0.2, positive 0.2. It'll be really, really interesting to see how retail sales did. And that may also add or subtract some market cap today based on how the report comes out. In addition, you have industrial production today. Tomorrow, you've got housing starts. Watch out for interest rates and uh, housing stocks and bank stocks too. Jobless claims and Mr. Jerome Powell speaking on Friday. Mr. Squirrely, he just can't help himself. You also have existing home sales. You've got Jefferson speaking. You've got Williams speaking. You've got Bostic speaking. You've got a lot of Fed talking this week. Now, two things that I want you guys to be mindful of. The bond market, this is the long bond. This is the 20-year plus. Now, don't get hung hung on this, uh, on this long bond, short bond. I'll explain to you why. And uh, a lot of folks have this question. You see all these bonds here? Anything beyond five years, like if you take the 10-year or if you take the 30-year or if you take the 20-year, which there isn't one, they're almost identical. For example, look at the trading range on the bond market. Look at the June bond. Just to give you an idea, look at how it's trading. This is the 30-year bond, right? Now look at the, oops, let me just go back one. Now look at the 10-year bond. They will look identical. Literally, they will look identical. Like this picture, if you were to put them next to each other, they would look identical. And they look extremely similar to what I'm about to show you, which is the TLT ETF. They look exactly the same. See that? Almost identical. So anything over five years is the long bond. And whether it's 10, 20, or 30 year, they are virtually identical. And one of the biggest problems is the long bond is moving down. Now, you're probably saying to yourself, if the bond market moves lower, that means interest rates are getting higher. If interest rates are getting higher, then what the hell is the QQQ doing up here? Why is it breaking out like that? Well, I'm gonna explain something to you. The QQQ itself, look at the equal weighted QQQ. We looked at this in, in the, um, somebody was kind enough to give me this ticker symbol, which I totally forgot existed. But this is the equal weighted QQQ. And if you look at the QQQ over the, la the equal weighted QQQ, you're going to say to yourself, what the hell's going on, Roger? It's not making, it's, it's, it looks like it's in a triangle right now. It does, and a, 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 a symmetrical triangle. And a symmetrical triangle can break out to the upside or downside. There really isn't any rule. The ascending triangles, upside, descending triangles, downside. But these, these symmetrical triangles can break out either way. Also, you'll notice that the high was made in February not how the QQQ looks. So what you're seeing right here is very much distorted by literally five or six stocks, five or six stocks. Like for example, Apple, look at Apple. Apple and Microsoft account for 25% of the index. Look at where Apple is and look at where Microsoft is. So if those two stocks are up actually 26%, they're making swing highs. So it's natural for this index. If you have a couple of FANG stocks making swing highs, let's see how Amazon is doing. 
I'm not sure Amazon is following that same lead. Yeah, it is. It is. So if you have Amazon, Apple, like for example, look at the QQQ and you could see that constituently speaking, Amazon, Apple, and Microsoft all making swing highs and NVIDIA too. That right there is about 35%, 35% of the index, these four stocks, 35, 37% of the index around there. That's uh, that's over a third of the index. So don't let the the performance on five or six stocks uh, make you feel like 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 the Nasdaq is breaking out because in reality, when you look at everything equally weighted, it's not. It actually looks a lot more like the spy does because it doesn't have that concentration of those large. Co it actually looks weaker than the spy. And just so you know. The SPY has been, in fact, moving down. It hasn't been moving up, ready for breaking out. The other thing that's really bothering me is the Russell 2000. Notice the Russell 2000. This looks like a head and shoulders pattern right here. Head and shoulders, right? Not a perfect one, but you know what I'm saying. It's a general head and shoulder patterns. And typically, this looks like the neckline to me, and it looks like we're going to break down. Even if we don't break down, it doesn't look like we're in any hurry to break higher. That's telling me small caps are not participating. The Russell 2000's got 2,000 stocks. S&P 500's got 500 stocks. So the broad market is not participating in this rally. More importantly, if you look at the QQQ, only 54% of stocks are trading above the 50-day moving average. And, and momentum levels, they're going lower. They're not going higher. This is the momentum levels. This isn't the actual chart. Momentum levels are cooling off. The momentum levels actually look like the equal weighted uh, ETF, like this one. They don't look, they don't look anything. See, they look like a, like you've got a triangle, very much like this. So don't be fooled. Don't be fooled by the QQQ and all these headlines that the NASDAQ is making all-time highs. It's really Apple, Amazon, um, what was the other one? Let's see here. Let's see here. What was it? It was uh, constituents. Here we go. Microsoft, Apple, Amazon, NVIDIA. That's pretty much it. That That's pretty much it. And it's kind of weird because this is telling me right now that Apple actually, and Microsoft has actually uh, higher holding than Apple. Nonetheless, this right here is 26%. And this right here is another 11 something percent or 12%. So you got like 37% of the market cap just in these four stocks right here. So don't be foolish and don't follow the NASDAQ as much as you think it was and the tech stocks because they're not doing as well as you may expect them to. It's the market cap that's completely distorting us. Now let's talk a little bit about the economy. Market participants are digesting soft economic data while updating plans on the federal debt limit as well as crucial retail sales. Uh, there's going to be a lot of talk about the debt ceiling and that can really impact certain stocks. Matter of fact, today at noon, I'm going to have an open house in my VIP room where I'm inviting everyone and I want you guys to attend and I'll be talking about the potential uh, downside of the debt ceiling. Now, the tech-heavy Nasdaq outperformed the other two indices held by a 2% rise in Meta, which also has, look at how much market cap Meta has, 4%. 4%. So don't don't be fooled by all of this. Um, and 2% gainer on the S&P following a report that memory chip firm Keoxia Corporations is speeding up merger talks. Now, uh, regional banks, they got a lift yesterday. Now, am I happy about these lifts? Yes, because it'll give me easier time to sell more bank stocks. And bank stocks are in the crapper right now. So just because these two stocks gained a little bit doesn't mean anything. I'm looking to sell bank stocks, especially regional bank stocks. Uh, ticker symbol is right here, KRE. I mean, they ain't doing all that great. The fact that they're rallying right now is a godsend because it'll give us an opportunity to sell them at a little higher level. I'm hoping they'll go to like the 40, 41 level and we could sell the KRE stocks. And if you don't want to get an idea of some good stocks, some good regional stocks, here's all the large regional stocks and the small regional stocks. And I would just simply go through this list. And uh, today in the VIP room, I'm actually going to go and pick out my best ones to short right now. So don't miss my VIP room at noon today. So data showed that New York New York Empire State Manufacturing Index, that's what I was talking about earlier today, uh, gauge of activity in New York, which is, last time I checked, the biggest state in the country, uh, dropped to a four-month low. They weren't expecting the number to be that bad. And then, on top of that, 
Bostic said Monday he didn't see interest rate cuts well into 2024. Again, the market's pricing them in, but the Fed is not. Uh, and caution that the Fed might need to raise rates more if inflation doesn't cool. And I agree with them, and I'm not seeing signs of inflation cooling. Look at the manufacturing yesterday in New York. Does that look like inflation is cooling to you? Now, Minneapolis Federal President Kashkari said the Federal Reserve probably has more work to do on our end to try to bring back inflation. Does that doubt sound to you like they're finished? Does that sound to you like their job is over? Don't think so. Now there's an 84.5 probability of no hike. This number was as high as 90 something percent. Now I'd love to see this number get to the 50th percentile. And obviously the 25 basis point rate hike percentile would go up to 50th percentile too, because 0.50 is not on the table. But if this number keeps moving lower, that'll keep putting pressure on the bond market, the short bond, and the long bond is already under pressure. Later today, Biden will resume debt talks with senior Republican leaders, including McCarthy, in another attempt to advert an unprecedented U.S. default, which will not happen, but it's fun to talk about it. Uh, Yellen issued a fresh warning on Monday that U.S. is already paying a price for its failure to raise the debt ceiling. They sure are. Uh, today, all eyes are on focused on retail sales. That's coming out at 8.30 in about an hour, uh, in about 42 minutes to be exact. Also, industrial production will be reported. Manufacturing will be, will be reported. Business inventories will be reported. And uh, we're going to have Mostic speaking, William speaking, and Logan speaking. And I want to hear them say, I want to hear one of them say, we may have to keep raising rates now, not in the future. Now, I want to hear the truth because there's a 15.5% chance that it'll happen and that number is going higher. In Europe, it's up just a little bit as morning investors digested important regional data and monitoring U.S. debt ceiling talks, strength in tech stocks and utility stocks. That's a weird combination. Let's support to the overall market. Now, China. China closed lower after April economic data missed expectations and pointed to a wobbly recovery in the second largest country. The National Bureau of Statistics on data on Tuesday showed data industrial output and retail sales data undershot forecasts we're having industrial production report today and our retail sales data has not done so well we'll see that today both retail sales data and industrial production in the u.s in china it didn't do so well suggesting lost further momentum at the start of the second quarter which was i was expecting since china is just getting out of COVID. give them a little bit of a break nikkei climbed to an 18-month high as strong first quarter earnings season and dovish Bank of Japan monetary policy stance made Japanese stocks especially appealing to investors. The Japan's topics index, it hit a 30 year high today as chip related stocks tracked overnight gains in tech heavy NASDAQ 100. Be careful, be careful with the NASDAQ 100. And also, Japan is going to be changing their policy, which is one of the reasons why their market is moving higher. The, the, uh, the Sultan of Omaha, <laughs> <laughs> or Nebraska, wherever he's from. Uh, Capital One, he's investing in bank stocks. This is really, really important. The fact that he's investing in, uh, cons this is a consumer bank stock. They don't do a lot of uh, commercial business. They mostly deal with personal finance. He disclosed that he's bought almost 10 million shares. That's huge. And that's going to bring uh, a rally to, to uh, at least a short-term rally to some bank stocks. It doesn't mean I'm not hating bank stocks. It's just we have to be selective and pick the right one. Guild Science, Gilead Science rose 1%. Williams Company rose 1%. And we've got earnings on Home Depot right after retail sales or right right after retail sales. Key Sign Technologies, Bidu, and C Limited is coming out. It'll be really, really interesting to see how it goes. Most other companies are small to report. Now, in terms of sectors today, financials look like they're going to remain kind of choppy. Energy looks like it could be bottomed out. I want to see if it breaks this low. If not, momentum levels are ready to go higher. I like utility stocks. I think utility stocks are going to get stay choppy and maybe go a little bit higher. Uh, consumer staples is my favorite sector right now. Be really, really careful with technology, communication services, and uh, the consumer discretionary because retail sales, hello, hello, retail sales. And you already saw what the uh, NASDAQ looks like when it's not using capitalized weighted. It's not nearly as strong. It's actually uh, quite neutral right now. So be really careful because if a couple of large cap stocks give, give up the chase, it's going to be a problem. Real estate looks very choppy. Basic materials looks like it can have a little bit of an upside. 
Uh, where's industrial? Industrial looks like it, it stays choppy and healthcare is choppy. Now, one of the reasons the market is so choppy is because the bond market's getting choppier. And the more choppier the bond market's getting, the more choppier the Dow Jones is going to get, which is one of the reasons why you are seeing this. And this is really, really causing a havoc to trend following systems and sector rotations because it's keeping everything very, very choppy and in a very narrow range. And unfortunately, I think this is going to uh, hit into the broader market, which will lower volatility. Matter of fact, if you look at volatility, if you look at average true range, here, let me just show you. See, volatility has been going down. Volatility peaked right here back in October. And since that time, it's been going straight down. We had volatility on the Dow. This is what the Dow, as high as 700 points a day. Now it's about half of that. Now it's about 350 points a day. So we can we can we can trade with a little bit less risk without using stops, but we still have to be very very careful because the market is in a sideways congestion type of pattern. We need a little bit of a trending to get us out of this, but right now things are very very choppy. Now today's Tuesday, and I give you my strongest sector and I give you my strongest and weakest stocks. So my strongest sector right now, consumer staples, without a question of a doubt. The weakest sector right now, the weakest sector in my opinion, let's see here, it would be the financial. Definitely the financial and energy are the two weakest sectors. Those are the sectors you gotta be very, very careful of. Now, top stock, let me show you what my top stocks are right now. Top stocks right now, it would, it would still be General Electric, which we took a profit on yesterday. Lamb Weston, General Electric, PHM Homes. PHM, uh, General Electric, <clears throat> and Lamb Weston. So you got industrial, you got healthcare, and you got home builders. Now, there's a couple of other ones, like DHI is looking really good, NVIDIA is looking really good. This is one of the chip stocks that I'm in love with right now, uh, but not as many as you may think. Cardinal Health is also looking good, and Leonard Homes is looking good. To the downside, oh boy, where do I start? I mean, CTLT, Catalent, I mean, what an awful stock. Comerica, uh, Lincoln National, Xeon Bank, I don't care about be having an upgrade, VFC, um, and Match.com. So you got CTLT, Lincoln National, Comerica, Xeon Bank, and Match.com. I don't think these stocks are going anywhere in the right direction. Now, before I let you guys go, take a look at this year, last year, and, and any year for that matter. You'll see that stocks have been nothing but volatile and unpredictable. <clears throat> but there's one market that's safer and more reliable than stocks. It's not gold, it's not real estate, or anything like that. It's much larger and older than the stock market. Today, trading veteran Celeste Lindman, she's about to reveal, actually not today, tomorrow, tomorrow on Wednesday, Wednesday the 17th, she's going to reveal exactly what it is during her free presentation at 1 p.m. Eastern time on Wednesday. Remember, today's Tuesday, it's tomorrow. I'm, uh, I just can't wait to see it, and it's happening tomorrow. It's happening in uh, a little over 24 hours. Wednesday, the 17th, 1 p.m. Eastern time, Celeste is going live. Follow the link below to check it out. If you're watching on YouTube, go to the Wealth Press YouTube channel, and you'll see it all there. You guys have an amazing day. I'll see you later. Remember, like this video, subscribe to this channel, post comments, and send me emails, support at marketgeek.com. I want to hear from you. Bye. Have a great Tuesday. Stay out of trouble. And remember, the NASDAQ and the tech stocks are not nearly as strong as they appear. you got to look at the equal weighted uh, QQQ ETF. Bye, guys. I'll see you later. Behave yourselves. Big day today.